Monday monologue. And I know some of y'all are going to be really excited to see this. Got a Wilkinson R8 push-pull KT88 amp here that we're going to be working on on the channel real soon. A friend of mine bought one of these and was thoroughly enjoying it. And he called me up and said, man, my amp did a flaming burnout. And I'm like, what? And he was like, man, I was sitting there watching TV and I'd forgotten that they left the amp on, which shouldn't really be a problem. But he said, I looked up and one of the tubes was glowing bright red. And then the speaker popped, crackled, and then a bunch of sparks and stuff came out of the bottom of the amp and I ran over and turned it off. And I was like, wow, what would make one of these amps red plate? So, I don't want to spoil what actually happened, but it wasn't any fault to the amp itself. There was something wrong with this house wiring, and we'll get into that when I get into the video on this. The amp itself, the way it was designed, actually kept it from doing more damage than it would have otherwise. They sized the cathode resistor just right so that that resistor acted like a fuse and burned up before it did any other damage to the inside of the amp. I'm hoping that it didn't kill one of the output transformers, but we'll see when we get into testing it. Anyway, I know you guys have been asking about me reviewing one of these for a long time. There are a lot of reviewers and influencers on the internet have reviewed these things and gave them, you know, glowing reviews. And, you know, I'm skeptical because these same people gave the Rysong A50 glowing reviews. And you know what I think of that amp out of the box. And so we're going to be doing a full test on this once we do the repairs. And again, it only killed one channel. And so I can test one channel versus the other channel. And then if they're the same, we know that there was no damage done outside of this cathode resistor getting blown up. I am seeing some resistors, especially the power resistors inside it, that are cracking and like the ceramic coatings falling off of them, which I don't know whether this has got something to do with what his house wiring was, you know, making the amp run too hot. So we may end up replacing quite a few resistors inside of it. And I already see some grounding things that I'm not real crazy about how they did it. But overall, it looks like a super well-built amp. The, you know, the machining on the cabinet of it is just beautiful. I mean, if I built an amp that looked like this, I would be super pleased. And the engraving and everything on it just looks super high quality. The way they've got the vents for the tubes and, and all of that. One of the complaints, though, he has is for his uses, it's got too much power and or too much gain. And we'll be researching into that, too. Like he said, he's never turned it up over about a quarter volume. And so, might be a case for putting EL34 tubes in this thing for him. Because it does have a switch where you, on the back here where you can switch between KT88 and EL34s. And so, that may be something we experiment with, too, is see what kind of power it makes with the EL34s and with the distortion numbers and all that kind of stuff. The other thing that it has is a triode ultralinear, and he said that he likes the way it sounds in ultralinear much better, but I found that when you run amps like this with those ultralinear triode switches, when you put them in triode mode, you need to disable the negative feedback because a triode tube really doesn't need any. And so that may be what's going on, and that might be a mod we can do to it. Let's put another toggle switch, maybe even just on the back, where you can turn on and off the feedback, which may work better in triode mode with the feedback turned off. So anyway, definitely some stuff we can do to this. And I'm real curious to try to figure out what this Center 6S and 7 is doing. It looks like it's wired into the power supply for the 
first stage of the driver tubes, not the phase splitters, but the drivers. And I think some people think this is the center one's a rectifier tube. It's not. It's a 6S and 7. That's not a rectifier tube. It's got diode rectification in it. So I'm really curious what that tube's doing, if it's doing some kind of plate voltage regulation or something. So anyway, interesting amp. I'm excited to get working on this, and we've also got the monoblocks almost done. I got just a little bit of work to do on the feedback, and then I want to, you know, do a video soon comparing the two channels on the Analog Discovery 2 with the different cathode resistors in them that have the tubes operating at two different operating points and see how they sound versus each other. And... I have a feeling the ones that are being run a little hotter are going to be the ticket, but we'll see. Just did a video series on reading schematics and going to upload those real soon, probably tomorrow. And I've seen quite a few people, you know, in the comments and or sending me emails that it made it clear to me that there's people that are building some of my projects that don't have any idea how to read a schematic and it's not real hard to learn it's learning the symbols and then learning how they're put together and then you can be able to figure out where all the components need to be wired without having to get like macro zoomed in pictures of the tag strip so that you can put the amp together right and honestly you know you you'd never be able to build anything that there wasn't a detailed video showing you how to do it and I'm hoping that this channel is inspiring you guys to build, like, amps that I'm not building. Going, man, I want to build some uh, 6V6 push-pulls. Or I want to build, uh, you know, different kind of KT88 monoblocks. Uh, Single-ended, whatever. You know, that y'all can explore doing these things on your own. So, anyway, hope you'll watch those two videos if you don't know how to read a schematic. And I hope I explain it well enough where you'll be able to do that. Again, this is going to be getting done on, getting on, jumping on this pretty quick. My friend, you know, he's already missing having this amp. I lent him one of my 6SQ7 EL34 single-ended amps, and he may end up loving that. It seems like he already is. The single-ended goodness. So, anyway, hope you're enjoying this content. I know really haven't been as prolific maybe as I was last year, but I found, like I told y'all earlier this year, that just really wasn't sustainable. And over Thanksgiving, I took a trip up to Boston to, you know, be with my partner's family for Thanksgiving and stuff. And so kind of had a week or so of no, no new content, but here we are. We're back. We got a great project. I know this is probably going to be a really popular review and mod series on this thing the owner of the amp doesn't want me to go crazy with it so you know i'm probably not going to go super crazy with trying you know different things with it like i did with the a12 but it also depends on what kind of performance it has if it's only putting out like one tenth of its rated power at you know reasonable distortion then yeah you'll probably want me to try to tune this thing up and get it working but from all the reviews I've heard, I can't imagine that, but then again, the A50 all got a bunch of rave reviews, and man, it's terrible out of the box, so we'll know here soon. So anyway, hope you're enjoying my channel, hope you're enjoying this content. If you are, please subscribe so you don't miss the new videos. Please like this video, and we'll see you next week for the Monday Monologue.